Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Eddie. So today I'll be um, giving a very short talk about what I did with Raspberry Pi. So um, this is for a project I delivered about two months ago. It was in the number of about a dozen units. And I actually bring a demo unit here with me right now. Okay. So um, maybe let me describe why do I choose this over some other conventional system. So my client has a problem. So he has basically this current his current setup. He has two uh, video sources and one video switcher to one display. So what uh, he does right now is if you want to switch between this input he has to use uh, he has to manually unplug the cable to switch between these two there was no control system in place there was no button for them to do the switcher and secondly the user want to upgrade to a more input video switcher so that he can add more it can add one more laptop, it can add one, one more f other video sources. And the user is looking for a simple touch screen to control the switcher. So it, in a sense, he, he's trying to make it more easy. Let's say someone goes into this room and he wants to switch between the desktop, the AirPlay receiver or a laptop. He, he can be able to do it easily using a touch screen instead of having to unplug or plug the HDMI cable. Yeah, so that is the, the problem. So second thing is uh, now, I'm, we have a couple of um, proposal. Some are using all the safe hardware brand, uh, branded, which is, which cost a few times more than what using a Raspberry Pi cost. <coughs> so in in this graph, this is a new switcher. It has now four input and th that is where my Raspberry Pi stand. The Raspberry Pi has a RS-232 connection to the switcher and <coughs> these are the three uh, new input to one of display. Go straight. So the detail, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B plus the official touchscreen. So these are from Element 14. These are the 7-in touchscreen. And to be able to directly control the video switcher using an RS-222 cable, I actually created a simple uh, PCB board that translate the TTL to RS-222 using a spot fun module. In my real deployment, there is no this USB cable. It was all combined into a 5-core cable. 3-pin are, are used for the RS-22 cable direct to the switcher and another two is power which is power direct to the 5 volt pin and the ground pin of, of the Raspberry Pi and the OS is using uh, Raspbian JC Lite I do some a little bit of customization if I just unplug it and I just put it back on you can see you boot up I customized some very simple logo on top of this, so it you boot straight into this Qt app. So um, hardware-wise, it's all open source. Software-wise, in terms of OS, it's open source, and also the user interface in the application is done using Qt. So it takes a little some moment for it to boot into the Qt app. Okay, this I think. Okay, okay. The 
I think some of you guys may have heard of Qt. So it's basically it's a multi-platform framework, which so happen is available on Raspbian as well. <coughs> and there's a few other things that a few issues that I met when I'm building this is the screen when the app does run, it doesn't go to sleep. So uh, what I did is I use I make use of the Qt event filter to actively poll for user touch or keyboard event. If there's no interactivity for about 30 seconds, you, you blank the screen. Let's say uh, it's put straight into the app. Let's just give it a moment and it will blank out when the inactivity kicks in. And I'm using this um, RPI clone from some guy on GitHub because I have problem when I clone a SD card direct to SD card for some reason the the card seem to have issue with the size of the of the card even though they are both technically 16 GB so what I did is I found this very great uh, very great system cloner I can I can clone it directly using a USB drive without first uh, save it as an image and then rewrite it to the system again. So, so these are some of my pictures that I did, a dozen of them. And this is the second picture on center top is the PCB that I printed on Sit Studio, and the third one is <coughs> the daughter board with um, RS two three two module from SparkFun, and these are the some of the picture. So you can see here now it goes back to to sleep. If I touch it, it will wakes up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's pretty pretty simple. Any any questions so far? Why didn't you use a normal <laughs> HDMI switcher? It would be a lot easier, right? Uh, off the shelf for port HDMI switch. Um yeah, the switcher is just a switcher. But if we if I want to control it I have to use some something to switch it. But the switcher doesn't have any <coughs> because that's why you say the person will unplug and plug it. Yeah. So let's say a four port switcher from like Challenger, you can just press one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. yeah, wouldn't that be a lot easier? Yeah, the idea is to hide, to hide all this cable, to hide the switcher itself, so as not to aesthetically wise, it will not be so messy on top of the table. Everything is hidden inside inside a cabinet. So the only thing you see on top of the table is just a switcher, uh, a control system. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I think, sorry. Thank you.